Let's take a look at a solar powered pendant light, a light that is literally just designed to hang from the ceiling and it's got an externally mounted solar panel or if you want to use it in a, say, a conservatory, maybe it could just harvest light internally. It's also got remote control and a rather odd thing about this I've already discovered is that it mentions this in the instructions. If you want to use it during the day, suppose you wanted to use it in a garden shed, then you have to... Oh, look at the pulse of modulation in that. I did not know it was going to be like that. Anyway, I'll point it down like that. It is pulse of modulating. Let's uh, use the remote control to turn it up to 100% brightness. There we go. No more pulse of modulation. But the main thing is, if you want to use this in a situation like a garden shed, it actually says you have to go outside and cover the solar panel because even if you, say for instance, you... It's going to flicker again. Let me get the remote control and put it up to 100%. Even if you turn it uh, off, then it will light up again the following night with its pulse of modulation. And if you want to use it during the day, you can press on as much as you want. Nothing is going to happen. So let's uh, take this thing apart. It comes with a... Actually, how many cores of this? It comes with a standard jack, two-pin jack. I wonder if it's just killing power to the thing completely. Hmm, tricky. Anyway, let's pop it open. Oh, I should show you the function. Oh, there's no point. Off on 25, 50, and 100%. It defaults to 50%, but you can turn the brightness up with 100% or down with 25%, and then it's got 3 hour, 5 hour, and 8 hour timer, and then it will turn off unless you press off. So let's start by taking this apart. Uh, that is quite annoying. Where's the little button? There's a little button in the back. It's a clicky. It doesn't feel like a click on, click off button. Let's take the screws out of this and see what's inside. So it appears to have six screws. Well, six that are visible. It's also incidentally got this which clips onto that for hanging the light uh, directly if you don't want to dangle it from the cable. And it's got this little bracket for the wall and then what looks like a universal joint for actually mounting it so you can swivel it towards the sunshine, which is good. How waterproof it is, is an unknown variable. We'll find out when we open it up. So let's get the last of the screws out of here. And marvel at the power source inside. What's it going to be? Is it going to be a tiny little lithium cell? Is it going to be a huge bag? It doesn't feel that heavy. Very empty inside. It's got one 18650. Space for four, so it is upgradable in a way. They've soldered the wire directly onto this. It's cheap. Um, yeah, they've sold the wire on both ends. Here's the circuit board. Actually, I'll take the circuit board out and take a picture of it. It does have two wires going out. There's no infrared feedback then. Does that mean there's circuitry in here too? There's an infrared receiver. And it just has two wires coming down. So this is a sort of standalone little circuit board. Right, we'll take a picture of that as well. Okay, I shall take the pictures, reverse engineer, and then we can explore. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So we'll start with the dinky little circuit board that deals with the power, first of all. So here's the incoming connection to the solar panel and it goes via a diode straight to the lithium cell. It also goes to this transistor via a 1K resistor and I'll show you this in the schematic. Its purpose is to detect uh, when dusk occurs because as long as the output from the solar panel is above about 0.6 volts, this transistor will turn on and it will basically signal to the microcontroller that that is the case. The microcontroller get its, gets its power from the lithium cell via this diode for decoupling purposes in a little capacitor to the microcontroller. Uh, the only other things the microcontroller has are a switch input and an output to the MOSFET, which is an AO9T. This chip here is a cell protection chip for the lithium cell. It protect, protects against overcharge and overdischarge by monitoring the voltage uh, across this little network. And I'll show you that in the schematic too. There is only one other oddity here. Um, it's got a mysterious 
pin connected to a pad. Not sure. They've just kind of left their options open in case they want to do something. Maybe it's a test pin or something like that. But that's more or less it. Um, it's charging the cell with any current that's available from the solar panel. Uh, this is a protection to protect, protect against overcharge and overdischarge. Although there may be overdischarge functionality in the uh, load as well. And as soon as the intensity from the sunlight on the solar panel drops to a specific level, it just turns on this MOSFET and puts power out to the other circuit board. Let's take a look at the other circuit board. I shall zoom out a little bit for this because it is a bigger circuit board. Then I'll zoom back in probably. Um, right, I will zoom back in. And we'll just concentrate on the middle because that's the important bit. And I'll turn it like this. No, I'll turn it like that. That makes sense. The incoming supply goes via two resistors in parallel to the LEDs. That's the main current limiting. Although I would say it's the main current limiting. It's only 0.1 ohm. I think the cable itself will also act as current limiting. Um, there's a little 3.3 volt voltage regulator. There is a microcontroller with just two pins used. The output from the infrared uh, receiver and then... The that goes to the input of the microcontroller and then when it gets appropriate signals it sends a signal out to the MOSFET which is an A2SHB uh, that's it, let's go straight to the schematics so for clarity here I kept the lithium cell away from the rest of the circuitry because it avoided too many jumps so here's the solar panel and it's charging the Lithium cell via this Schottky diode. The lithium cell has that protection chip with a little divider, 100 ohm and a probably 100 nanofarad capacitor across the cell tapped off to provide a signal to the protection chip and just as it monitors for uh, the voltage going above, say, 4.2 volts or below 3 volts probably. I'm not sure the exact specification for this. The chip had various... well. Uh, this is the chip. That That's the schematic for it. Uh, there is a data sheet which gives the voltage thresholds, but it's a vague chip. The number on it didn't tally up with any other chip, and as usual, but it's a clone of a clone of a clone. It's a common chip. But that, basically speaking, it's got an internal MOSFET and it will turn the power off. It will basically disconnect the cell if it detects it's being overcharged or over-discharged. There is the dusk sensing tap from the solar panel which has a 1k resistor and a 100k pull down resistor and as long as the voltage uh, on the solar panel is roughly 0.6 volts it turns this transistor on standard j3y npn transistor and this uh, pin of the microcontroller will have weak pull up just as the button one will have and uh, the transistor simply pulls that down so it all it sees is the input going from high to low when uh, there's daylight available there's the decoupling circuit for the power for the microcontroller, a little short key diode and a capacitor providing stable power so that when the output is being pulsed, modulated or switched in some way, because this is a universal module, it means that if the power, the voltage dips here, it won't actually be seen by the microcontroller. It sees a sort of charge on that capacitor, an average value. Uh, the microcontroller then... Um, reacts to the switch being pressed to turn on and off and re reacts to the dusk input to turn this MOSFET on and off an AO90 and that just puts power out to the LED circuit. There is a missing resistor here which will be a 10k resistor, that's a usual value which is from the gate to the zero volt rail just for stability but they've not included that, they presumably just think it's not needed. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the next page which is the LED panel. The LED panel gets that switched power and it uh, has the main voltage rail, but it's also got a little 3.3 volt regulator, which is a bit odd because when it gets down to the lithium cell won't cut off till it gets down to about 3 volts. So at some point it's going to lose that regulation. But here's a 3.3 volt regulator, fairly generic little component with a couple of decoupling capacitors across it the infrared receiver and its signal out to the microcontroller, that's it, and then the output with the 10k pull-down resistor to an A2SHB, very classic MOSFET, 29 LEDs in parallel, and then those two 0.22, oh, 0.22 ohm resistors giving a total of about 0.11, but of course you've got that long thin cable that's feeding it as well, which will also act as a current limit, and also the microcontroller is uh, pulsing modulating the LEDs, so when it comes on, 
Initially, it will be at the mid of the 50% intensity, and then the remote control can be used to switch it high, low, or off. And that is more or less it. The lithium cell is currently being discharged because uh, it uh, has been fully charged, it's been tested, and I shall, it's going to take a while. So I shall leave the result of that. I'm going to guess 500 milliamp hour, 1,000 milliamp hour. I'm going to leave that uh, in the description down below. The solar panel, I haven't tested that. Where is the solar panel? The solar panel is here. How many bits of silicon do we have? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 5.5 volt roughly solar panel. With the size of these, I'd say it's between 150 to 200 milliamps and fairly decent sunlight. Unfortunately, it is that one where they've stuck the pieces of material onto a plastic backplate, uh, connected them and flooded it with silicon not silicon, resin on top. Uh, that means there will be thermal coefficient expansion differences between the plastic and the silicon. So there is that slight risk of delamination and cracking of the solar panels. But that's kind of what you expect for stuff like this. It's a shame they didn't put more cell cells in, but then that's just something to be expected. And if you like a lot, you could do that yourself. Or just upgrade to a bigger cell. But there we have it, the little uh, light. Where is the reflector there? It's a nice enough little reflector with its cover. Um, it's attractive in its own right, just as a sort of hanging light. It makes a nice change for these. And it would be quite nice in a greenhouse or some other place where you just wanted a little splash of ambient light at night. But there we have it, the solar-powered pendant light. Fairly logical circuitry. Two microcontrollers and just standard circuitry.